I got a Steam Deck. But this video is not going to be a review of the Steam Deck. It's going to be me talking about the games that I have been playing for the last month since I obtained a Steam Deck. The focus of this video and the games I have been testing over the last month are all entry-level games. I wanted to see how easy it was to just pick up a Steam Deck, not have to mod or download anything extra, look up community configurations, you know, work around anti-cheats or anything like that. This is just a handful of games you can download on the Steam Deck and how easy it was to get into them any downsides they might have, and my quick thoughts on the games. As for the Steam Deck itself, it's great. I honestly think it's probably the best handheld that's been released since the PSP. Just having a handheld that you already have access to your Steam library with, and they're continually hoping to update and help more games run on it, thumbs up for me. So... Let's start talking about the number one game. Really, not on only my Steam Deck, but everybody's Steam Deck. They put out a monthly report on what games are played most often on, on the Steam Deck, and this one is number one every time I've seen the report, and that is Vampire Survivors. And really, it's, it's a no-brainer. There were absolutely zero downsides to Vampire Survivors that I found while I was playing on my Steam Deck. It works perfectly, it's listed as great on deck, and it's a great game that is actually low cost. You can get so many hours out of this game, and it works amazingly on the Steam Deck. There's, there's really not much else I can say about Vampire Survivors. It works perfectly, it's a low-cost game, and there's literally no downsides that I found playing it on the Steam Deck versus playing on PC. So, one of the greatest things about the Steam Deck, and I've heard this said by a few people, is how much more it helps you play your backlog in your Steam account. And it's really true. I was playing Vampire Survivors a little bit on the PC before, but I had kind of stopped for a couple weeks. Once I got the Steam Deck, it was the first thing I installed, and I played it a lot more, got further in the game, obtained more unlocks, so on and so forth. Really, Vampire Survivors is just an easy choice for the Steam Deck. I gotta pop in real quick to do one of those. Look, it's editing Kohlrabi here to leave a note. All of the gameplay shown in this video I recorded on my PC, just cause it's a, a whole hell of a lot easier to do that. And I do play most of these games on both PC and Steam Deck, which is really just a huge benefit. You know, the cloud saving, jumping back and forth between each other. And being able to still play my game, but spend time with my partner instead of being locked in my office where my PC is, it's just, I've played so much more. But yes, all of this gameplay is recorded on PC and it is casually recorded just to get ideas. Don't come at me for my decks or gameplay or strategies, or anything like that, okay? It's not me seriously playing, it's just for the video. The next game that I've been playing on my Steam Deck over the last month is Slay the Spire. Slay the Spire is one that I purchased specifically to play on the Steam Deck, and I had never played it elsewhere before. I have since also downloaded it on my PC, and I think, honestly, I prefer to play it on the Steam Deck it just feels really nice, it's super quick, it's listed as great on deck, there are no drawbacks, and this game, I did not know what I was getting into, but it is a deck building roguelike. I put so much time into this once I purchased it, just laying in bed on the Steam Deck, listening to a show, or you know, 
right before bed trying to get a winning run for the first time and also unlocking all of the things for each character. Slay the Spire is a quick to learn game that is hard to beat in my opinion unless you're really great at building decks in roguelikes uh, but even if you beat it you unlock a new mode and there are still more things you can do getting the unlocks for all characters and ascension mode etc this one is just another easy quick recommend i don't have anything negative to say about it All right, so before we get into the games that I have some concerns about or some drawbacks to playing on the Steam Deck, let's talk about another one that is great on deck and I had zero issues with. That game is Waves. I actually saw this one recommended on Reddit for the Steam Deck and I had never played it before. It really reminds me of Geometry Wars back in the day playing on 360 all the time with my friends. It's an easy game to pick up. It can be super challenging if you want to get better and better and get a higher score. And there are a bunch of different modes. It is also free. Once again, this one played great on the deck and I have no concerns. So Vampire Survivors, Slay the Spire, and Waves played absolutely perfect. I didn't have to do anything extra, and I absolutely recommend them. They are also either free or low cost, which is going to apply to most of the games on this list. Um, some of them were a lot more low cost when I purchased them because of the Steam Winter Sale, but if you wait for sales, you can pick up any of these for under $20, most of them even under $10, so it's worth it. Okay, so that's where we get to me adventuring into the games that are not listed as great on Steam Deck. These ones I have a little more feedback about and possible concerns. If you are jumping into it as a low effort Steam Deck user, like I said, not downloading any extra programs, not modding, not even going into the Steam Workshop to look up community configurations. All of that is more advanced stuff. And for this video, we're just going to be focusing on things you can quickly jump into. That brings us to Project Zomboid, which was another one I had never played until I got the Steam Deck, saw it was on sale thought it would be a good game to play handheld just casually. There is a lot to learn to this game when you're starting off and it's almost beneficial to play on PC first compared to Steam Deck but I found myself if I was switching between PC and Steam Deck starting to get a little mixed up with which controls were which. So the surprising thing to me about Project Zomboid is it is listed as great on deck, which means it's a completely green check mark. They don't list any concerns. I'm not entirely certain what they would list, but to me, it wasn't as straightforward on the Steam Deck. Um, there's a lot of in game menus and things like that. And I had some issues closing certain boxes or figuring it out. But once you get the hang of it, it's it's pretty good. And once again, there are community configuration options available in a lot of games for the workshop, but I haven't looked into those yet as I'm just testing jumping into them without any extra work. One of the other things uh, for me personally about Project Zomboid was there are no achievements yet in the game. I see that there are people online that keep asking when they're coming out, but I have not been able to find an update. I, I would also say that Project Zomboid is not a casual game from my experience. 
Um, it is really challenging, and it is more of a realistic look at zombie survival. All that being said, I do want to give it more of a chance and kind of learn it better and look into how I can perfect my experience on the Steam Deck because it is a really cool concept. And for all my testing and playing, I just played solo. I did not join any servers or things like that, which is another thing that would be interesting to look into. Next up is Multiverses, which is another free title. Of course, it's your Warner Brothers or whatever take on the Smash Bros. style fighting game. Um, I think for a free game, it's, it's actually pretty decent, and I've had some fun just playing it casually. Um, it works pretty well on the Steam Deck. It is a title that is listed with a yellow checkmark. And for the yellow check mark, it says it's a game that requires manually invoking the keyboard to use and type into some areas. I didn't really have a problem with that at all. Um, gameplay felt really nice. You know, the basic controller layout was great. And if you're looking for something like that, it's, it's a good option on the Steam Deck. If you wanted another option in this realm of games for the Steam Deck, there is also Brawlhalla, which is available and is verified on Steam Deck. There are two other games that I tried out on my Steam Deck, but I had various different issues with just jumping into them and casually playing them. I tried to set up Pinball FX on the Steam Deck, and it had some issues where it wasn't going full screen and it was kind of glitching out in places. But mainly my issue that I researched is there is not cross save or cross sharing of your pinball tables between Xbox and Steam. Um, they, you know, blame that on the Steam versus Microsoft store and, and yada yada, but I didn't get very far into trying pinball FX. Um, it did not meet the criteria. And then another one, which I do want to mention, because I, I downloaded it to try it, and I actually found it to be really interesting. It's a game called Cell to Singularity. Now, this is a game that is one of those idle games, but it has kind of a unique twist and a lot of ways to keep the gameplay fresh, in my opinion. Obviously, if you don't like idle games, this wouldn't be for you. So Cell to Singularity is a, another game that has a yellow exclamation point and what it says on Steam is some functionality is not accessible when using the default controller configuration, requiring use of the touchscreen or virtual keyboard or a community configuration. So when I downloaded it, of course I'm just trying to jump in, uh, the only thing I could get to work was using the touchscreen, which is perfectly fine if you are okay just using the touch screen the whole time. I wasn't about it. 
So I jumped on PC and started playing it there and actually enjoy the game as an idle game. So if you don't mind using a touchscreen, it is another option you could pick up for the Steam Deck, just casually play. As you know, with most idle games, you do some things, upgrade some things, leave it alone for a couple hours or a day, come back, gather your earnings, upgrade, you know, do it all over. What I liked about this is it seems to have events and different branches that kind of change up the gameplay and just a unique concept as well as some mechanics to your traditional idle game. So that is what I've been playing on my Steam Deck for the past month. After I make this video, I am now going to dive into some mods community configuration. Uh, I've had people tell me that they play Call of Duty on the Steam Deck and it works great. I would, I would much rather play Call of Duty on a PC myself. And then I know there are certain other games that would be great to play on Steam Deck, but their anti-cheat is not working well with it right now. So those might open up in the future. I know Paladins would be a one that a lot of people like to play on the Steam Deck, but the anti-cheat gets in the way. Obviously, there's ways around that, but it takes more work. So let me know what you think if you are playing any of these games or if there is a game you would absolutely recommend that is super easy to get into on the Steam Deck. I figure there are people out there who will buy the Steam Deck and just want to play casual, easy to pick up games and thought this might help. So 